we give you praise and honor. Thank you for the opportunity again and again. Thank you for what you did in the last episode. You were so, so much mighty with us, doing the wondrous things in our midst. Tonight, O oh Lord, I ask that in time and space, let the angel of the anointing execute your word. Thank you for the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom and the discernment of spirit to minister to us. I ask, Lord, that the angel of this mandate transport your word in efficacy and in the simplicity of the gospel and in the language that can be communicated to us in Jesus' name. The last time we discussed vividly trying to introduce the kingdom and today we are moving on gradually, gradually to a deeper realms. I'm talking about the riches of the kingdom and tonight I would like to introduce to us there are two riches of the kingdom. There are two riches of the kingdom. The riches of his grace and the riches of his glory. The riches of his grace and the riches of his glory. And by way of introduction, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. Can we read together? Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. He said, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. You say, according to the riches of his grace. Look up at me. According to the riches of his grace. What is grace? Grace is unmerited, undeserved favor that comes from the Lord. Why unmerited? Because man fell. He have left God. He have sinned. He have deviated from the original plan that God ordained him to. But God in his mercy still came for this man. By coming not just to change him automatically from the realm of his sovereignty as God. But he has to come through becoming a flesh. To be born through a woman on the earth realm. What is humility? Undergoes every training for 30 biological years. God baptized by another man on the earth realm to fulfill order of the Leviticus priesthood. And then becoming a kingly priest to save me and you. That is the grace of God. Let me tell you about that is the grace of God. So there is riches of his grace. I didn't write it. The Bible talks about the riches of his grace. And I'm not going to touch it because this one will tempt me to remain in this series and never touch the aspect of the glory. And this mandate has so much thought on the grace of God. So on that purpose, we want to see the other side of the glory. Now, he talk about the riches of his glory. Why are we going to talk about the riches of his glory? Because God told us as a mandate last year, when in last year where God declared three years at his stop, he said the year 2021 is a year of shining. And the year 2000, oh, come on, they're not rejoicing. He, that is the word of prophecy, the year of shining. And when the shining takes place, what you have is what? The glory. So the year 2022 is the year of glory. And the year 2023 is the year of the manifestation of the Spirit. So, three years at a stretch. Three, four years. Declared it for us. What a God we serve. So, we're going to dwell on the riches of his glory because we're stepping into the year of glory and God wants to see the manifestation of his glory in this mandate and in our life. And in your life too that is listening to me under the sound of my voice. So, I want to talk about these two riches already. But before then, there's something I, I want to show you from Matthew chapter 6 so that I can have a, a clear definition and a clear picture of the glory based on how God revealed it to me. Maybe the way he revealed it to you may be different, but revelation, a little here, a little there. So whatever I'm explaining is not the all of revelation. So whatever you know and you hear somebody discussing the same subject matter, don't condemn that person. Get it for what he has and add to your own. This will make you grow spiritually. There are some people that are so pride, they are so arrogant, based on the theological knowledge and whatever. You pay attention. Then what can I boast of? Because I've not been to any Bible school. I only went to medical school. Yeah, I've not been to any Bible school. But I studied my Bible. And that's the truth. And that's the truth. Even as I'm speaking tonight, I don't know which one is homiletic or the exegesis or the homiletic. I don't know if I'm balancing it. But I know there is somebody that watch my back. His name is called the Holy Spirit. That's taking me around. He will take you around the whole world. He will announce you by the hand of God. Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 13. 
and I read. He said, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forevermore. He said, for, for thine is the kingdom. Look up. The word thine means yours. Look up here. These three things at the time belongs to God. In the last episode, I said that whatever God privatized, he has publicized it now. Whatever God made private, he has made it public to us who are in the scent, the scent in the light. You only had immortality. But now, the immortality is in us. We are the eternal life. He gave it to us. We have eternal life. 1 John chapter 5, verse 10 to 11. John said, I write unto you that you may know that you have eternal life. And he said, and this life is in his son. And he that had the son, have the life. First epistles of John chapter 5, from verse 10 to 11. So eternal life is not what you are going to get after rapture. You have it now. And when you know you have it now, it will kill cancer in your body. It will dematerialize any sickness and every form of satanic assault. Can I hear you say amen? amen? So, I want you to read together. Those of you in the studio, can we read this together? One to go. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forevermore. Amen. So, he said it belongs to God. And from last week, this kingdom that belongs to God, God gave it back to us. Luke chapter 12. I want to prove the three for you. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. Now, God gave it to us. Can we read together? Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you what? The kingdom. The kingdom has been given to us. So when Jesus was teaching them, the disciples, this prayer, the man of prayer, he said it belonged to God because it was not available for man at that realm. But when he died and resurrected, the kingdom was given to us. Take note. The three things here that he hold on to, the kingdom that belongs to him, he said it, it is Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. And in Luke 17, 21, he said the kingdom of God is now within you. And in the book of Matthew, there was a definition of the kingdom. He said the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink, but in what? In, in what? In righteousness, joy, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And this righteousness is a gift to you it's been given to you the joy is a fruit of the recreated human spirit among the nine the peace also is there so it's been given to you oh hallelujah so the kingdom is been given to you it's been given to me number two the power luke chapter 10 verse 19 and jesus said and i give unto you power and authority so the power has been given unto me Revelation 5 12. He said, Who is worthy to open the book? And the Lamb was worthy to receive the book. He opened it, he opened that seal. And what was it? the content? He received power, riches, glory. There are seven of them. He received it for our sake. And that power, he said, And I give unto you power. The kingdom of God is established on power. And number three, we have glory here. John 17, verse 22. Is anybody getting blessed tonight? You see, I'm establishing an understanding here. The kingdom, the power, and the glory. What he was giving them in the manner of prayer in Matthew chapter 6 is what we have access to already. It's not going to be in the sweet by and by. So that, starting from the kingdom. The kingdom, he says, it's my father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And the kingdom is the dimension and the activity of the Holy Spirit. It's been given to you. Number two, he talk about what? The power. He said, and I give unto you power to tread upon snake and scorpion. And ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon thee. That means the source of power is the Holy Ghost. The custodian of the kingdom is the Holy Ghost. The source of glory is the Holy Ghost. Is he talking about the same thing? Now, what is the... Uh, we're talking about the, the glory now. Can we read together? And the glory which thou gave me, I have given them. So God has given us his glory. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3. He said he has called us to glory and virtue. He said according as his divine power had given to us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. According to what? And who had called us 
to what to glory and virtue the word virtue there is translated in the greek excellent i love excellent things i do excellent things my brother my, my friend was talking to me in the house he said he said you have taste i said yeah that's the spirit of excellence it's coming from the holy spirit when you partner with him he sees through your eyes he feels through your body he talks through your lips oh hallelujah he sees through your eyes oh thank you lord jesus hallelujah come on say the excellent spirit is at work in me I will never make a wrong decision in my life. Lift up your right hand. Those of you watching me at home, whatever. Say, excellent spirit is at work in me. I function in excellence. I do excellent things. I talk about excellence. I see it. I live that life. They manifest for me. I lay my hold on excellence. It's my lifestyle. It's a virtue in my kingdom. As a kingdom agent, I tread on excellence. Excellence is mine. I live that life nothing less than that in the name of jesus i'm excellent i do excellent things i talk excellent talk hallelujah in school i excel i'm excellent in school i'm excellent in ministry in family in the society in business i do excellent things oh is in my nature is in my kingdom is the nature of my father god i carry excellent spirit the holy ghost oh yes oh yes oh yes oh yes this is how to talk it daily you talk it like this before 10 days you see excellent excellent is not what god gave you already gave you in christ jesus you got to talk it to see it you got to talk it to have ability to do it i'm excellent Woo! hey hey hallelujah Woo! mashata kabada still talking about the riches of his glory so, so i'm just trying to give you the definition from here so you see talk about you say the kingdom for thy is the kingdom the power and the glory we have established that those three things now belong to us the kingdom lives in me that's the christ in me the glory is what he gave to me when i received the holy ghost he enveloped me with his glory i'm now the glory of god i have the glory of god i be carrier of the glory of god and the power is my custodian oh hallelujah he said and i give unto you power what is the source of power the holy ghost at one eight and ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon thee now he live within me he step into me with power hallelujah so when i carry his word and i start speaking as a king that's the power i'm distributing ecclesiastes 8 4. he said wherever the word of the king is there is power that means any man that is void of God's word, even though he's a king, even when he speaks, his word is empty. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. So each time you listen to messages like this, you soak yourself, you study, you read scripture, you meditate, you are coding power into your voice. There are a lot of preachers all over the world. People teach and sweat and scream. Nothing happens because they only read and study to go and preach. But when you internalize, oh Kabahata, you have a consciousness to stay in his presence, picking a verse, meditating upon it, studying it to know it, for the word of God to water your spirit and changes you. Your word will become gum with the aura of the utterance of his glory. When you tell cancer, go! Instanta, ho rabasata dabada. When you say money, come! Instanta, it comes. The word of God bridge the gap between you and the supernatural. That means the supernatural is not far from what you have not spoken out. He said, if thou shalt say unto this mountain, thank you Holy Spirit. So what is the kingdom? The kingdom is the governmental system of heaven. The governmental system of heaven. The Edenic realm. The word Eden is not a garden. Eden means government. The, the reign of God. What is power? The power is the ability to run the kingdom. The currency to run the kingdom. The ability to run the government of God. The power, the able, the dunamo. The activity that runs the kingdom is the power. And what is the glory? The atmosphere that is generated from execution of the power. That is the glory. 
I repeat, he said, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. The kingdom is the governmental system of heaven. Power is the ability to run it. And glory is the cloud, the atmosphere that comes from the generation of power. Now, I'm talking about the riches of his glory. Let's get into the word. As Psalm 42, hallelujah. I'm talking about the glory state, the riches of his glory. I don't know if anybody is getting blessed. If you're getting blessed, can you pray in the Holy Ghost a bit? Agabai do Oche Oche Agabai do Agabai do Agabai do Agabai do Oche Psalm 42 verse 7 I'm talking about the riches of his glory The riches of the kingdom I'm limiting myself to the two riches The riches of his grace And the riches of his glory Psalm 42 Psalm 42 verse 7 Can we read together He said deep call it unto deep At the noise of the water spout And all the waves and the billows Are gone over me Look up at me now, these are deep prophetic words. I'm discussing tonight about the deep glory realm of God. I'm talking, I want to introduce the glory from that aspect. Now, there is a glory deep that God put in a man. And there is a glory deep where God dwells. And each time we carry our deep to come close to the arena of the deep of God, there is a fresh water from that arena that poured into our soul that brings a new dimension. A new level of glory atmosphere. So David here, in the deeper fellowship of Colonia, begin to say, say, deep, call it unto deep. You take a deep. Now, deep have to call unto deep. You can write it down. Those of you writing. Every man is born with a certain deep. There's no man that is born on earth without a deep. Because the, corrupt, the corrupted version of the first deep, of the first Adam, did not just leave him. He got corrupted. And that deep begin to search and have affinity through the satanic nature to some realms of satanic forces. And man suddenly begin to serve element and creature instead of the creator. They begin to have covenant with water to have something to do with the marine. They begin to have covenant with stone and have been masquerade and all manner of things that just suddenly erupt. It was as a result of the fall of the first Adam. So the deep of God that's supposed to give direction to God, Satan began to channel it through his ways. And then there was a diversion of mind. And in the, in the epistle, Paul wrote to a certain church, he said, being alienated. They were alienated. They become alien to a realm that Adam once tasted. He became alien. Things begin to degenerate. Even mosquito that was created as a filter feeders. As a medical person, mosquitoes are not meant to suck blood. There are mosquitoes in the forest who still undergo their life cycle. They lay egg on stagnant water and they still hatch themselves. How come the one at home is sucking your blood and is giving you malaria? It's spirit is involved. I'm saying this tonight so that you don't just say, hey, because mosquito beat me. Oh, come on. A spirit is involved. That knowledge is, is through gnosis in the science realm. And because of certain depend on that to beat people and still give them malaria. What about mad people that lie down in the gutter? They have no consciousness of mosquito. So you never make them sick. They don't have card in any hospital. So praise God forevermore. I'm going deep now. Because the deep, the correct, the corrupted version 
of the first Adam exposing to satanic realm, the atmosphere of Satan. And there, will, there seems to be a, a fellowship in that dimension. So when David said, deep call it unto deep, there is a deep of God. When we got born again as a new creation, there is a nature of God that's stepping. The glory of God, the deep, the Christ in us is a deep. And anytime we fellowship with God in worship, in praise, in prayer, especially praying in the Holy Ghost, Kimala has so for the Bible says, for we know not what we pray. What are we doing? We are, we, are, we are giving access to the deep in us to have a fellowship with the deep in God. And when we do that, there seems to be an inspiration that flows out of us. That's what Christian meditation is all about. You give access to God's word. You ponder on it. You see, there's a bubbling. There's an inspiration. Most times when we preach, we flow. Like tonight, I also go back to listening to messages like this. Not because I'm checking my grammar. No. There is a deep that Pastor Bongrit have caught even right now. That Bongrit need to hear from Pastor Bongrit. So that his spirit mind can stay alive. Can I hear you say Amen. That's what the Bible says, a little here and a little there. Now, I believe in practical Christianity. Look, look up at me. I want you to get home tonight, pick a Bible before you get to bed. Assignment for everybody. Assignment one, about deep of glory, calling unto deep. Just pick a pen and a jotter. Stay there and speak in tongue for five minutes. Pick a verse of scripture. Write it out and be looting. For instance, for five minutes and then pause. You will see that the scripture you are reading, you start hearing meaning to it. Try to write down anything that is coming to your mind as touching that verse. You'll be shocked. You may write a full page. Don't read it tonight. Sleep. When you wake up in the morning, you will read it. You, you will be wondering, when did you get those inspirations? Because that moment you speak in tongues, that was the deep in you, fellowship with the deep in God, with the Holy Ghost in you. And the product that is coming to your mind is no longer your thoughts. So when the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, what it means that you engage your thoughts to God's word. For he said, for my thought for you is for good and not of evil. But there is a diversion of thought that's supposed to focus on God's word and God into some corrupted version in the negative dimension. Are you getting me tonight? Deep, call it unto deep. So write it down. Every man is born with a certain deep. So when you become born again, there is a deep that is born in you that when you engage that deep in meditation and look inward, not on the outside, that business idea will come out. That vision will be bent. That's why if you are a, a Christian or a pastor or a businessman and you live in competition, you can never fellowship with your deep. Another deep in satanic realm will put you on the run. Before you know, you start envying people. You lose your original vision because you want to be another man. But each time we come in, that's why David will always say, deep, call it unto deep. Deep, call it unto deep. Look up here. There is a calling here. It's a deep, call it unto deep. Now, let me, let me just play with this verse. Let the next verse, verse 8. Thank you, Lord. Can we read together? And he said, Yet yeah, the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. Did you hear that? And in the night, his song shall be with me. What he knew that? He said, as I'm worshipping and I'm singing his song shall be with me, he will initiate it. It's, now, with me and my prayer unto the God of my life. Now, you, see, you see the fellowship here. He said, the song, he's the one who's going to worship his song. And as he's doing that, the wording of his song is prayer itself. Next verse. See a cracking. There's a cracking here now. And I will say unto, my, unto God, my rock, why has thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Next verse. As with a sword in my bones, my enemy reproach me. Why they say daily unto me? Where is that God? Next verse. Why are thou cast down? Oh my soul. You see now. See, he have gone deep in the prophetic. Now he's ministering back to his soul through song and deep of that meditation. I call it Santos Santos. 
that is the place of deeper intimacy where you come to God, you are just there meditating. You take words to him, you receive words back. And when you are done, a certain realm of glory will be generated. I mean, the glory deep in you is calling on to the glory deep in God. And when they come together, there will be an intersection. And sometimes you fertilize your mind. When you leave such environment, direction comes. Light will flash in your spirit. Sometimes you may not need to hear any voice. Sometimes you just become so bold. Suddenly the house rent that looks so, the fear of it. Suddenly you are so joyful. You have not gotten the money, but you have this confidence that before the deadline, you are meeting it. Answer has come. I call it the answer of peace. At that moment, he has still the water. He said, be still and know that I'm God. Psalm 46 verse 10. He has still it. Confidence has come in. I mean, a vote of victory, a note of victory has come. I don't know if I'm taking anybody deep tonight. So there is a deeper place than staying in church and be ya, 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 keyboard, ya, ya, guru, 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 hallelujah. The secret place of God is a place of intimacy where we assess the riches of his glory. The glory realm is the light dimension and the light dimension is the scriptural realm. That's why they said in Psalm 119, he said the entrance of his word giveth light. And understanding unto the simple. The simple here are the nepios in Greek. Which means the simple, the humble, those who are humble that can come for the simplicity of God's word. What do I mean by this? Let me break it down to the church of our generation. Here is a preacher walking to the podium. And I say, everybody bring out your Bible. Open to the book of John 3.16. Then you chew your gum. <laughs> John 3.16. This guy no good message. <laughs> John, well, for God so love the word that he gave me. So let me continue. So, <laughs> the whosoever be <laughs> Amen. You are kidding. A humble man is that man that will still open. You literally, you see people still going to not because they cannot quote it from their brain. They open it. Maybe the cost of trying to open it as you are just for God so loved. That was how I called this Raymond. He won't just service in Cardona. In those days, I just checked. I noticed that the love there is, is past then. That there is D in front. For God so loved. That means God is not loving me. He already loved me. From that day, my life changed. That word changed my life. Because as I was trying to open it, I saw what I have not seen before. Do you know what saw it? It's not one great. It is the deep in me that saw that deep. That there is deep in front of love. That means God is not loving you tonight. He already loved you. His love for you is already in the past tense. So that's an assurance of love that he's not trying to. Because if he's trying to love me, my ways are not right 100%. Yes, so I will think he's not going to love me because I'm not yet perfect. But while I'm yet sinners, he already died. Another scripture will come in and then your assurance of God's love will boost in your heart. No matter how any man preach condemnation, you know God loves you. Come on, help me tell you about Jesus loves you. Come on, louder, 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 louder. Let me feel you in the studio. So I say deep, call it unto deep. I say every man is born with a certain deep. Is it clear tonight? Now, that is glory calling. So when the Bible says from glory to glory, what does it mean? From glory to glory, the riches in the, in the dimension of the riches of his glory, from glory to glory means the deep of God in you. Calling unto the deep in God on a daily basis. That's why David talk about there are new every moment. And each time the deep in you search for the deep in him, there is fresh understanding. That's why he always say, as the dead panted for water, so my soul panted after thee. Psalm 27. There must be a longing. There are riches that are stored up in the glory atmosphere. Each time I come there, that's where I see healing. That's where I see the prophetic. I see men from that cloud. I address issue from that wisdom, the cloud of that glory.